he ran as a moderate. But as soon as he got elected, he signed up for Bernie Sanders' agenda, and Bernie Sanders' agenda did not work. We've had early indications of that in Virginia and New Jersey. I think they're headed toward a very, very tough election this fall. Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell telling us that last hour, and Karl Rove joins us now. Anything to quibble with there? No, I think he put his finger on it. I think this was the biggest mistake in the speech last night. Uh, to bringing back the Build Back Better plan and trying to repackage it. The words Build Back Better never passed his lips, but it was all there. Let's do the prescription drug thing. We got to worry about child care. We got to have climate provisions. And all I'm going to try and now describe this as an anti inflation matter. Pass Build Back Better, costly as it is, and it's going to re reduce inflation. Doesn't sell and a bad mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, I will scale one to 10. I mean, how did you score it last night? I did. Kind of the easiest way to interpret well, how you're reading it. Well, I think you got to divide it in two. You got to divide Ukraine and everything else. I thought on the Ukraine it was a strong start. He was smart to address it at the beginning. It's what the what the news media wanted wanted to hear about. It's what the American people wanted to hear, and I thought it was it was effective. Uh, I thought everything else was not so effective. Uh, it, look, th these speeches we endow them with a false, you know, importance. We think of them as big, dramatic moments, and that's because of the pageantry and all the press coverage. But in reality, they have very little effect on public opinion. The one rare example of it having a big effect on public opinion was when Bill Clinton, shortly after failing to be impeached in the Senate, appeared in 1998. Otherwise, Gallup suggests that the change in public opinion improves the president's rating by one or two points on average. So, but, but what we are expecting, what you want to do is foreshadow. What are we going to do over the next year? And what he essentially said last night in the second part of the speech after Ukraine was, we're going to try and do the same thing I've already failed for the last year and a half in doing, and that is passing the elements of the Build Back Better without ever mentioning their name. And I'm going to try and suggest to you that this is a solution to inflation. And I don't think that's going to be, um, you know, in essence, I hate to say it, bought by uh, independent voters and swing voters in this election. They think the problem is the government is spending money it doesn't have, diminishing the value of the dollar, increasing demand, and inflation is too much money, chasing too few goods, and that's what we find ourselves in today. Well, I'm going to put you down for a two. Carl, <laughs> 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 um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she blasted the speech, too. Watch here. I do think that there are some things that were left unsaid, things like student loan debt, uh, our overall cri our larger themes and crises in education, uh, as well as the peace on immigration. I think that uh, it, it definitely was a lost opportunity. There is profound bipartisan support to a long, a long, uh, a long term shift away from fossil fuels. Carl, it was that kind of approach that helped her help one of the uh, candidates that she wanted to help in Texas win last night in that Texas primary. Yeah, well, it, it, her candidate, she came down and endorsed two. One was uh, a, yeah. a guy named Greg Kassar here in Austin. In a very deep blue district, he was backed by her and, and he won. And he is going to be mentioned by, I suspect, every Republican candidate in a competitive race in Texas today because he is not only in favor of defunding the police, he has actually cut the, de the budget of the Austin Police Department and at one point suggested that we implode, we blow up the existing police headquarters and create a new entryway to the city as a sign <laughs> of our commitment to changing policing. So that kind of nuttiness is going to be front and center. She also backed a candidate down in, in a congressional district against Henry Cuellar along the border. Uh, there's, it's going to a runoff, and I don't know if Henry Cuellar or, or Jessica Cisneros is going to win, but if Cisneros wins, she's in favor of the Green New Deal of killing energy jobs in a vital energy part of the country that already began to shift red last year because of that issue. And she's also in favor of getting rid of the Border Patrol in a district that borders the Rio Grande Valley, where there are a lot of Latino voters, and many of them have a relative or friend who serves in the Border Patrol, and they strongly support them. So the, the, yeah. last night in Texas, we had some problems created for the Democrats in the fall election. Interesting. Carl, thanks. Nice to see you. Thanks. Good to see you. Next time, more time. Carl Rowe, thank you.